What up, what up, what up? It's your boy Baz, and we tuned in to Eating in the Streets Podcast, a.k.a. Ends. Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? When I was trying to get this podcast off the ground, I had a lot of questions. How do I record an episode? How do I get my show into all these apps people listening to? How do I make money from my first podcast? The answer to all these questions is really simple. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast, too. That means more money. That means you can get paid to podcast right away. In fact, that's what I'm doing right now by reading this ad. Now, it's crazy because... Ends media jumping into the whole podcast scene was kind of new and kind of foreign. We've been planning and planning and planning, and we said the campaign is going to be 2019. And it was just, it was a long time coming. Um, we did online radio, we did videos, interviewing people, asking about their experiences, and giving tips and advice, and just really just telling their own testimony and giving our own, you know, reaching back out um, and giving our own testimonies, every aspect of it, uh, no matter if it was from the business, no matter just from just the lifestyle, no matter if it's just, you know, just tips, or just staying motivated, man, because every day is a grind, every day is a fight, every day is a hustle, and every day is going to bring a different challenge, and every day is different, you know, you're just blessed to have a different day, so stay focused, Stay blessed, and let's eat. You are now tuned in to the mob. It's your boy Bass, and y'all tuned in to another episode of Ian's Podcast. Man, today, I'm going to be kicking it off, man, diving straight into the analytics, man, but we're going to be talking about the podcast game. I know some of y'all is podcasting out there. And, um, you know, we all embark on these journeys. And, you know, it ends the family, man. So let's embark on this journey together. Um, I got my data analytics pulled up. And I'm going to be going over the top three things that I needed to fix in order to start seeing an increase in um, streams. So let's dive straight into it. As y'all can see pulled up, y'all see, like, ever since, um, when was this? This was... This was uh, December, December 18th. Um, ever since December 18th, I've been seeing a steady increase in, um, in my daily streams. Uh, if y'all can look over to the side, <clears throat> y'all can see sort of the numbers um, in the video. Uh, it says 500,000, 1.5K. So y'all can know what like the average, you know, like what the weekly average or what the average is. Um, and... By any means, I'm not saying like I'm out here doing crazy numbers. <laughs> this ain't to brag or boast or anything like that. Um, as I can see before, it was like I was I was way under 100, um, doing way under 100 streams. But one of the first things I start to notice, uh, like one of the first things I start to notice what was wrong and I started looking at like my competitors and stuff like that. Not necessarily looking at them in a sense like, you know, like, damn, I'm trying to see what they're doing. Um but more so, well, actually, yeah, I'm trying to see what they're doing, but I'm trying to get an understanding of what is the actual structure and then try to see, like, how I want to, you know, do it in my sense. Um, so I started seeing that, like, dang, like, you know, they got, um, like, like their uh, their graphic art. You feel me? That was one of the first things I changed. Um, and when I changed that, I started seeing, like, a, a, like a, a small increase at first. Um, so one of the first things I changed was my graphic art. Uh, just that cover art because that's the first thing somebody see and that's the representation of you know you and what your voice uh may be about so a lot of times people you know they click on what they feel like is uh you know either interesting uh popping out you know like you know grabbing their attention um and that's something you know that it can you know something that they can relate to uh so over that time too we was testing out uh just 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 various just different ways 
Um, the one thing I've seen in particular was always creating a custom image. Uh, depending on what I'm talking, um, depending on what the podcast episode is about, we have our standard, uh, like our standard cover image. But depending on what the episode is about, if we're featuring somebody or recovering a certain product or recovering a resource or we're talking about a certain situation, or something like that, we will basically design a cover, you know, specifically for that episode. Um, so it can reach, you know, it, it, it translate a lot better. You know, the, the message could translate a lot better because say like, if we just had like one, just, um, like we do, uh, we have like one, just like generic, like our standard, um, just like cover art for our, our podcast episodes. Um, but that cover art might not really relate to somebody that's trying to listen to like say like if if uh they're trying to listen to something like cars or something then we got like ends and a shark <laughs> on the cover of it they're gonna be looking like uh yeah it seems cool but it, it might not really grasp their attention but then they might see a, a different one where it's an actual car like charger on the front and they say uh, you know and then it's like you know ends you know ends podcast you know and then they're gonna probably look at it like oh it's nice they might be talking about muscle cars i got i got a charger i got a challenger i'm interested in challenger you know things like that so i start trying to uh figuring out just different ways how can i um you know just package up the the the, the, the look of the actual podcast episode uh just far as marketing wise um then the next thing uh the the next thing i started improving uh for real for real i had to start improving was man podcast episode detail and started paying more attention to how i was titling my podcast episodes because one thing for sure when i was looking at different uh individuals like i'm 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 looking like they titles, you know, they titles ain't really all the way catchy or nothing like that. But the big difference between them and me, like, always understand what your circumstances. That's why I say I wouldn't like for them. Um, they already had big audiences. You feel me? And um, so more so, I had to kind of give you. For me, I didn't necessarily have the audience, so I had to kind of put those 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 keywords that you're looking for in my uh, title. Um, so it can kind of grasp your attention so you can know exactly like, oh yeah, this is something that I'm looking for. So for example, if I was to say, um, like, you know, interview, uh, well, like, you know, talking Robin, uh, well, for example, just saying we did a, a podcast episode going over Robin hood saying like using Robin hood, dividends, trading stocks, buying stocks. So then it's like, if somebody was to be scrolling past that, they see that then they'd be like, all right, well, Boom, he probably gonna be talking about dividends. I wanna learn about dividends. He's gonna be talking about how to buy the stocks and he's gonna be probably talking about how to trade the stocks. They more, you know, like versus me saying like using Robin Hood. Then they might be like, uh, you know, they probably not really interested in the actual platform itself. They could have been just interested in the actual process. You feel me? Going back to those key words, they probably were just was interested in learning about dividends because they heard it before or something like that you know keywords that trigger them like you know like they heard dividends before or something like that they're probably familiar with that they probably you know and, and interested in learning about that uh or if it's buying stock they probably were interested and want to learn how to buy stock but never really got into it and was like damn i got time let me listen to this real fast or it could have been you know um on the flip side like selling stock uh, just going into like, dang, like I wonder how how do people be selling stock, you know? And that might grasp their attention versus me just using just Robinhood, like, uh, you know, just this is how you use Robinhood. But I start putting uh, different keywords and you know just different words in there to try to give uh, the listener and whoever's searching um, a better idea of what my message and what the values that are in my message is about. Um, and you see this when like you know. And, and 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 other forms uh when, when people write articles and stuff like that to try you know grasp your attention or social media and stuff like that was you know is is, is really that attention grabber i'm trying to get your attention so i have to focus on that um so that's going even into uh the detail when people read the podcast episode because then they might still be on the fence they might click on it but like let me see what this episode is actually really about if you ain't really got no good description about what you're talking about they're gonna be like uh you know they might move along or they might click but you know it's like we want to reinforce that so start taking a little bit more time to actually focus on you know uh 
podcast description, like giving our actual podcast description. At first, we weren't really giving one. We were just saying like, you know, we're the voice of the culture or, you know, this is the latest podcast episode and put like the episode title again or something like that and probably like a link to something else. But it was like, uh, you know, giving like any and at, and at that, I started realizing it didn't even have to be that long. It just giving like a brief summary. Uh, it could be a couple minutes. Or some, I mean, I said a couple minutes, a couple sentences. Uh, as you see, like on the back of like uh, books and stuff like that, or on Netflix, for example, most um, <clears throat> I start looking at different businesses that do that. You feel me? Like as I'm just saying, for example, books. You look on the back of books. It's like a little small little paragraph, brief, brief summary, and they might have a little summary about the author. You look on Netflix when you go to go search for a different um, video, or something like that. They got like the like a small little video description. Some of them are bigger than more, you know, and some of them. And some of them even come with a trailer, but some of them just got, but but all of them got that brief, that brief description. So you can get like, you, you can kind of, you know, get a, a, a idea of what the concept or what this uh, movie could possibly be about. You would do the same thing if you were looking at product, you feel me? Man, so, you know, just, just going more deeper into it, man, we start talking uh, just description, just being more mindful of how you want to, you know, give a detail uh a detailed summary about your podcast and understanding that that is really needed the third and most foremost man is really um having an actual distribution marketing strategy and i put both those words together for a reason um so when i first was starting out man i wasn't utilizing um all the various uh podcasting platforms I wasn't even uh, really marketing the podcast. I mean, like sharing it on, you know, social media and things of that nature. Um, so that is one big flaw right there. Like, if don't nobody know about you. Um, who going to really come see about you? Uh, if you don't put yourself, uh, if you don't present yourself to nobody, excuse me, you don't really give them uh, really the opportunity. You just really hoping for an opportunity instead of, you know, kind of, Putting forth the effort to place yourself in front of these uh just different various people so just thinking in the sense of uh distribution i was looking at i started looking at it of just pieces of pie um like if i can create a small audience on apple if i can create a small audience on spotify if i can create a small audience on iHeartRadio, if I can create a small audience on Pandora, if I can create a small audience on Deezer, if I can create a small audience on Stitcher, I can keep going on and on. But we we on numerous, like basically every major platform. But around that time, that's when I had to start really doing the legwork of that. It really started thinking about it in a sense like, man, I, I'm trying to be on, man, I'm trying to have be like uh, McDonald's or Starbucks. I want to be on every corner. Like that way we could catch all the foot traffic. And then it, it starts to, you know, it starts to add up. Um, especially when you start monetizing your podcast, you will, you will really start to understand what I'm talking about. Um, so... Not only do we have our own website, but I know when I was starting out, you know, I was using platforms like uh, like SoundCloud, for example. Um, but at the same time, I wasn't really uh, like focusing on sharing it and like really like distributing my podcast episodes um, and really trying to focus on like putting them in front of people that will find value in the content that I'm producing. I just kind of just put it out there and just hope. That somebody was gonna stumble across of it and hey it was gonna catch fire i was gonna wake up one day and was, i was gonna you know have a thousand streams <laughs> or something like that but that's really not how it works and just because you share it or something like that that's really not like just because you just post it like hey you know check out that's one way to start you feel me hey congrats to you that's the one way to start but i'm like talking about really like distributing your podcast putting it in front of you know those different audiences so when I say that, it was like, man, if I put my podcast on like some like Spotify, and when I know that most people that got iPhones or Apple products, they're gonna use Apple services. So which means Apple's music or Apple Podcasts. So I'm kind of already, if I don't go into that market, I'm kind of edging myself out a little bit. So I place myself in that market as well. Then I start looking at it from um Android user. Like, not everybody has Spotify. Like, you feel me? But one thing that I know that every Android phone comes with is Google Play Music. So I made sure I put my uh, podcast on Google Play Music. Um, you know, and I, I, was, I, was just, I, was, I was just breaking down a pie like that. Like, and just start thinking in the terms of, you know, meeting people where they're at, you know. 
And that's one of the biggest things about uh, ends. You feel me making the most out of our current circumstance, but we always say we are the voice of the culture, but you got to go to where the voices are. You feel me to be able, you know, to voice those culture, you know, like to be the voice of the culture, you got to be in it, you know, so you got to go to where is that? Um, so if I want to, you know, get more iPhone users, more Apple users, go to where the Apple iPhone users at. If they mainly streaming off of Apple services, then, hey, you got to kind of bite the bullet, you know, like I ain't going to, you know, like say I was I don't own an iPhone. Long story short, I own Android, like, you know, like Android operating devices, whatever you want to call it, Android phones. That's what I got. I ain't no Apple user. I ain't the one that's saying, oh, I don't pick up or I ain't responding back if your message is a certain color. I ain't no, no, I ain't no none of that. I had an iPhone before, so I ain't gonna knock it. I had it before, but just long story short, I'm just saying, like, I had to take, like, you know, how people be having those biased opinions, put that to the side and really try to hit the mark and really understand what the goal was. The goal was to help voices be heard. We are a platform and that we wanna, you know, basically empower voices so we ain't doing no justice if we ain't out there really trying to make sure the people that we bring onto our show like making sure that they voices ain't being heard i ain't gonna restrict them you feel me so it's like i had to put my own bias to the side like, all right well let me go to like you know just reach out to these various markets at first i'm like man let me build my own but i'm like this is how you build your own you feel me it's a thing called uh I, it's, a, it's a term I learned during school. You feel me? Uh, I want to say it's cultural uh, diffusion. You feel me? And that's really like how, you know, you know, trade, like a lot of trade happen. You feel me? It's where it's cultural diffusion. It's when you bring your culture, you know, to somewhere else. So they bring their culture to where you at. So it's like, all right, man. So I, I got to go meet uh, those that may be interested. But right now, you know, they Apple users. I got to go meet them. You feel me? Or or maybe they don't use none of that. Maybe they iHeartRadio or something like that. I got to go there. I got to go to these different markets where they is trying to digest the value that I'm trying to, you know, uh, give them. You feel me? That's coming from the, you know, the various people that come, you know, on our platforms, you know, just sharing that message. Um, so, yeah. So the last just real, just real big key point um, two is distribution. Um, but at, at the same time, these all go hand in hand. Um, and the reason why I say that is because you don't want to push nothing that like they won't understand. You got to always make sure that you can, re- you know, that the message is relatable to who you're trying to target. Uh, and that's the biggest thing, um, especially just going back and just to what we were just saying, just being the voice of the culture. You want to make sure that you are properly representing those voices that you are, you know, spreading out into the world and, you want to make sure that whatever that's uh, presenting them is properly rep- uh, is, is presenting them, you know, on both ends. So that goes into the cover art, you know, the pro- you know, like just the description. I about to say product description, but but it's more so the podcast description. You feel me? The cover art, you know, if it's if it's about somebody, you, you feel me? Highlight them. You feel me in the cover art, over it, or if it's about a certain organization or uh, or. Um, you know, or something like that. Like, that's what I was thinking in my mind. Not saying you have to do so. Everybody has their own process. Me personally, that's what I was thinking in my mind. Like, man, let me highlight them. So when somebody's scrolling past, they know exactly what they're getting. This is what our focus is on. Is on this person, this strategy, or, you know, this business, or this experience. Or, you know, like, you you know exactly what you're getting. Um, so it, it makes you feel more comfortable what you're clicking on. <laughs> But, you know, I've been talking for a little minute, man. Like I always say, uh, when I have no guest on and it's just me, I don't want to talk for too long because I love to get y'all feedback, man. Like I say, this is a, a conversation um, and we always about, you know, spreading voices, you know, being a voice of the culture. So I want to hear what are some challenges that you over, uh, overcame, you feel me, with creating a podcast and what are your interests, you know, even in podcasting? Do you? You know, or, or, or do you even just just say what's up, man? <laughs> if you ain't even got nothing to ask, you just want to say what's up, and you will appreciate what we do, man. All gratitude, man. It's good gratitude, man. We appreciate it. Um, but don't forget, like, share, subscribe, and it's your boy Baz. Y'all tuned in to another episode of Ends Podcast, and it's Ends the Family, and y'all know what it is. This podcast was produced by Ends Media. We. Y-